Today we're going to be exploring DC motor control with a three channel PWM pulse generator without the use of Arduino. This three channel PWM pulse generator module is designed to generate pulse width modulation signals for a number of different applications. This module has three different independent channels and they're each capable of outputting adjustable PWM signals and that makes it suitable for controlling devices like motors, LEDs, and other pulse width modulation driven components. And this PWM pulse generator can be used with Arduino, but today we're not going to use the Arduino. So if you're looking to add DC motor control, LED dimming, or just general signal generation without programming or coding, and you want something with some flexibility and that's user friendly, we're going to check out the standalone operation of this module and see if it could be a valuable addition to your project. Today I'll be using a 3 channel PWM module, a 3 to 6 volt DC motor, a momentary push button, a 1K and a 10K ohm resistor, a 5mm LED, the S8050 transistor, a 30N06LE MOSFET. I'm using the diode from my Elegoo Mega Kit. There's no indication of which one it is, but the 1N4007 should work just fine. I'm using a DC power connector, a couple breadboards, and a 5 volt power supply, and some breadboard jumpers. When you get your module, you're going to need to do a little bit of soldering, not a whole lot. I'll show you the back here. I'm going to solder in some male header pins from this variety pack I've got here. I'm going to snip off just enough to solder to the left and right side of the boards. And these are the male header pins I'll be working with. I'm going to go ahead and put those in right here. And I'm going to set them down and just solder all the pins in place. I switched from a liquid flux to a rosin paste flux and it works really well. It burns off clean. It's not real sticky like it was before. And I found that if I just solder one at a time here and put some of this paste on here, the solder will flow real nice and I can see whether my pins are straight or not and whether I need to fix them before I solder the rest. And the paste I'm using, in case you're wondering, is SRA Flux number 135. And I've also been using 0.8 millimeter solder and this has worked very well for all of my electronics. I'm done soldering and just know that when you get these bubbly looking solder connections they can fall off easier and they don't have as good a connection as this right here. This is a good solder connection so keep that in mind. This module provides three independent PWM channels. Each of them have the capability of generating signals with adjustable frequency and duty cycle. The frequency can be adjusted between 1 Hz and 150 kilohertz, and the duty cycle is independently adjustable for each channel ranging from 0% to 100%. The module includes an LCD display that shows the current frequency and duty cycle settings, which makes it easier to monitor and adjust in real time. This module also automatically saves all parameters so that the settings are retained even after you turn the power off. It's useful as a square wave signal generator for various experiments and precise motor speed control applications, as well as LED circuits related to PWM dimming. Today we're going to use the S8050 transistor to switch the DC motor on and off with our PWM pulse generator module. I chose this transistor because it switches on and off with minimal voltage drop and it can handle continuous collector current of 700 milliamp. And it's a good option because the PWM module generates low power signals and the S8050 can amplify these signals to drive a higher power load such as this motor which the module itself can't handle directly. This transistor's collector pin can handle up to 700 milliamps of current and in today's video we're operating our motor at 5 volts with very little load so we're not worried about exceeding that at all. But if you're powering your motor with 6 volts at a very heavy load, you may be approaching or even exceeding that limit, and that's when it's important to switch to a transistor or a MOSFET with a higher current rating that'll give you the headroom that you need to reduce the risk of exceeding the current limit. So remember to always check your data sheet and adjust your load when needed. Here's my setup. The transistor collector and emitter are both connected to ground. The base has a 1K ohm resistor on it, and it's connected to PMW1 on the module. This is a diode from my Elegoo Mega Kit, and it's placed across the motor terminals with the cathode, or the striped end, connected to the positive motor terminal, and the anode connected to the negative motor terminal. For the module, the PMW1 is connected to the collector, the transistor, and the ground is connected to the ground rail. Over here, I'm making it simple with 5 volts to the power rails, the breadboard, and on the left side of the module, I'm powering it with 5 volts, and then it's connected to ground rail. Over here I had a fan in my Elegoo Mega Kit and I connected that to the shaft of the motor so you could see rotation a little bit easier. Here's a diagram in case you have any questions about the setup. I do want to mention real quick that if you're using this with a servo motor you do have to change the position manually by adjusting the duty cycle setting on the module and this is fine for simple static applications but if it's not suitable for dynamic or automated servo control for that you want to use a microcontroller with some servo libraries that's a much better choice. 
You don't have to have this module for very long to realize it could be a very useful teaching tool, especially with an oscilloscope and the fan blade attached to the motor shaft. This would show you a real-time visual representation of waveforms and allow you to see signal changes over time, and that would help with the understanding of concepts like frequency, amplitude, and waveform shape. Let's go ahead and increase the duty cycle a little bit here to 48%, and you can see that the blades are rotating faster. We'll maintain a frequency of 7 Hz and increase it to 59%. We'll keep the frequency the same and increase it to 66%. We'll increase it again to 74% and again to 85 percent. It's going pretty fast so let's increase the, uh, the frequency a little bit and you, it doesn't need to be very high at this duty cycle. So we'll just get up to 12 and you can see it's working pretty hard. And if you had an oscilloscope you could see those waveforms. And now we'll go ahead and decrease frequency all the way down to 1. Here's our second diagram. We're going to add a 5mm LED with a 220 ohm resistor to the PWM2 pin of the module. At 10 Hz, you'll see the uh, LED blink quite a bit at a lower duty cycle. As we increase to 100%, you'll see it turn solid. For smooth dimming and to avoid visible flicker, you want to turn your frequency above 100. Here we have it set at 125, and you can see that the dimming does not flicker even at a lower duty cycle. Each channel in this module can have its own duty cycle but they all do share the same frequency. As you can see I'm operating channels 1 and 2 at the same time here. This is the third setup. I got rid of the LED and I replaced the transistor with a logic level MOSFET that can be fully turned on with a gate voltage of 5 volts. As you can see, the 30N06LE MOSFET has three pins, a gate, a drain, and a source. And the gate is connected to ground by a 10K ohm resistor, and it's connected by the PWM1 pin by a 1K ohm resistor. The drain is connected to the negative terminal of the motor, and the source is connected to the positive lead of our momentary button. This is a good option for switching our motor on and off because it has a low gate threshold only requiring 5 volts. It also has minimal heat dissipation and it's great in digital circuits that require rapid on-off transitions. Here's another look at my physical setup and where I have the resistors placed in the breadboard. The blue resistor is the 1K ohm resistor and the brown one is the 10K. In this setup I can use the button as a trigger to activate the motor. And some of the advantages of using this PWM generator is the precise variable speed control that you have. Just by adjusting the duty cycle, you can have precise speed regulation. And it also has good power efficiency, and with efficient power usage, you can extend battery life in portable applications. And since implementing this module is straightforward, you can use the adjustable parameters to provide flexibility in your projects. And that's all I've got for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it by clicking the thumbs up. Also consider subscribing and share it with somebody else who may find benefit from it. And I'll see you again with another video.